Hello and welcome to class. We're going to talk about pattern validation in HTML. And to do that, I've created a website that has an index page and a thanks page. When we complete the form, which I've already put in, on the index page and click the submit button, which I already have, it will advance to the thanks page if the input matches the pattern or it will generate an error if it does not. So let's create a basic input here. We wrap all inputs inside of a label tag. My user instructions, in this case, I'm looking for a user ID. I'm going to have an input. The type is going to be text. It's going to have a pattern and it's going to have a title. It could also have an ID, it could have a name, and in this case, I do want it to be required. Once we save that, we can see that we have a user ID ready for an input. Currently, if we click the check me button, we're going to get an error because the pattern is empty. So for our first example, let's create an input that contains exactly three lowercase letters. In the pattern, we're going to start with two square brackets followed by two curlies. Now in the curlies, we put the number of required characters. In this case, you can see it's exactly three. Now the pattern, in this case, is a lowercase letters. So we want all letters A through Z. And they are lowercase, so I type that lowercase. Let's save it. So if we have three lowercase letters, it should show the confirmation page, and it does. Now let's put in some uppercase. It throws an error. Let's put in some numbers. It throws an error. Let's put in more than three, and let's put in less than three. So we can see that this pattern requires lowercase a to z in exactly three characters. Let's move on to a slightly more complex example. For this one, we're going to require four or more lowercase or uppercase. So four or more would be four comma, so anything four and above. We want lowercase letters, which we already have, and now we want capital A through Z uppercase. So if we come down here and we put in some lower and some upper, and it's four or more, it will advance. If we have lots more, it will advance. If we only have a couple, it should throw an error. If we put in numbers, it should throw an error. So that one is working well. Let's increase the complexity one more time. Let's try between two and four, just numbers. So this becomes two comma four. So anything between two and four, and we don't want any letters, we only want zero through nine. So if we put in some letters, it should throw an error. Uppercase should throw an error. Less than two should throw an error. More than four should throw an error. That should work, and it does. For a final example, we're going to create a pattern that allows someone to enter their first and last name. So the user instructions would naturally change to full name. Names contain lowercase letters. Hopefully you capitalize the first letter of your first and last name. And then the shortest possible name that I know of is two characters. And since we want a first and a last, we're going to acquire at least two and anything above that. So I know a guy named Ty. That works. I know someone named Jackson. That works. I don't know anybody with a name that's a single letter, and that would not work. Well, what if we put in two names, Ty Jones? Whoa. 
please enter your first and last name. I did enter my first and last name, but the problem is I've entered a space and there's no provision up here in the pattern for a space. So to add a space, you're going to do a backslash and then a lowercase s. So if we save that, and now we put in tie, it confirms. Well, what if we get a fancy person like Dr. John Jones? Oh, that didn't work. Why? I've got spaces. I've got upper lowercase. Oh yeah, I put in a period. So to make this more user friendly, we also need to add a period as an acceptable character. So let's save that. And now let's try Dr. John Jones. And now that works as well. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to manipulate patterns, the number of characters, and an appropriate matching title so the user knows what you're looking for.